Hello, my name is Dia Jackson and I am a freshman marine science major. Today I will be talking about an African American woman in black history who was a pioneer in the scientific community. Her name is Roger Arlena Young and she was the very first black woman to earn her PhD in zoology. Her story is truly inspirational and I felt that it was important to honor her life, especially as someone who had not received credit for all the work she has done. Thank you for listening and hope you enjoy. Roger Arlena Young was born in Clifton Forge, Virginia in 1889. She came from a low-income, poor family, but this did not stop her from pursuing her dreams. In 1916, at the age of 17, Roger started at Howard University in D.C. with the intention of earning her bachelor's degree in music. She took her first science course in 1921, General Zoology. It made her realize that this is what she wanted to do for the rest of her life. When starting to take these classes, her grades were poor due to struggles with her mental health, her mother being sick, and not having the same opportunities as the other people in her field of work. Ernest Everest Just became an important mentor that tutored and helped her get her grades up. Ernest saw potential in her and decided it was important to support her through her undergraduate schooling. He even mentioned that she was a, quote, real genius in zoology. In the face of all these challenges, Young was still able to graduate with her bachelor's degree in science at the age of 24 in 1923. After graduating, Young was invited to do research with Ernest Everest Just over the summers at the Marine Biological Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. She gained a deeper understanding of paramecium and wrote her first scientific paper called On the Excretory Apparatus in the Paramecium in September 1924. Young did not stop there. She was eager to earn her master's degree, so she applied to the University of Chicago and was accepted in 1924. When studying at the university, Roger Arlena Young's grades improved tremendously. She was a part of Sigma XI, a scientific research honor society where scientists as notable as Albert Einstein had been a part of. After completing her master's in 1926, Ernest Everett Just hired Young to help assist him as a professor in the Department of Biology and Geology at Howard University. Over the summers for the next nine years, between 1927 and 1936, she continued doing research at the Marine Biological Laboratory. She was the first black woman to join the scientific community in Woods Hole. However, segregation and racial biases towards African American people was still a prevalent problem in Massachusetts at the time. The challenges in gaining the same opportunities and recognition as white men in her field came from the fact she was black and a woman. She refused to have this set her back and worked twice as hard to gain the respect of her peers and mentors. While working at Howard University with Just, her workload was tremendous as she was helping run the zoology department while also researching the effect of ultraviolet radiation on the development of sea urchins. Even with the heavy workload, Young continued in her successes and was eventually accepted into a doctoral program at the University of Chicago. The only step she had to take was to pass her qualifying exams. However, in January 1930, only a week before Roger was meant to take her qualifying exams, Ernest Everett Just left for Europe again. This left Young feeling completely overwhelmed with the burden of heading Just's department, coupled with having to study for her examinations. Not only was Roger Alina Young struggling with the workload, but she was also struggling physically and financially. The work she had been involved in with ultraviolet radiation had impacted Young's eyesight, causing cataracts and eye cancer. All the distractions going on in her life, she failed her qualifying exams in January of 1930 and was denied acceptance into the doctoral program at University of Chicago. Dr. Frank Lilly, a white biologist Young had been studying under, had seen her failure as being unfit for the scientific community and refused to work with her any longer. Young returned to Howard University and continued her work under Ernest Everett Just. However, her relationship with him had become strained. She was treated unfairly in the job, and in a letter she had even wrote to him, quote, you seem to be making a deliberate effort to keep me from doing any research while in residence in your department. In 1936, when the opportunity opened up, Just fired her from the position. After getting fired, this did not discourage Young. Instead, she saw this as another opportunity to further her education and get her PhD. She retook her examinations, got accepted into a doctorate program at the University of Pennsylvania, and graduated with her doctoral degree in 1940. Immediately after graduation, she, she was hired by North Carolina College. Although she was paid less, she was much happier with her position. 
Only two years later, in 1942, she was promoted to the head of the biology department. Young started a new chapter in her life, where she was more involved in the civil rights movement. In 1944, she became secretary of Durham's NAACP and joined the Harriet Tubman YMCA Board of Directors. Unfortunately, in 1946, she had refused to move to the back of a bus and was arrested. After being released from prison, she struggled to find work because she had been blacklisted in the scientific community due to her work in civil rights activism. Through the early 1950s, she could only hold jobs for short periods of time, she did not have stable finances, her mental health had become a big issue, and the work she had done with ultraviolet radiation years ago continued to deteriorate her eyesight. In 1960, her mental health was at an all-time low, so shortly after, she committed herself into Mississippi State Mental Asylum and was released December 21, 1962. After her release, she worked at Southern University in New Orleans until her death on November 9, 1964, at the age of 65. It is incredibly disappointing that the work Roger Arlena Young has contributed to the scientific community has been brushed aside and hidden behind the male car counterparts she has worked with. It is paramount that we celebrate stories like hers and other women of color in STEM fields in order to encourage future generations.